Good evening, everyone. Thank you so much for joining the Missouri Association for College Admission Counseling Virtual College Fair. We're excited to have you with us, as well as our lovely institutions here today. Um, just a few housekeeping reminders. Um, this is a webinar. You are muted and your videos are turned off. So in order to ask questions to our panelists this evening and to our presenters, the Q&A button is located on your screen. Please feel free at any point throughout the presentations to put questions in there and our, um, and our presenters will promptly answer those. Um, there are more sessions this evening, so you're welcome to sign up uh, for as many as you'd like through the rest of this evening. You can head to the same place where you registered for this fair to sign up for that. And then recordings will be available within about a week of this session and available at strivescan.com backslash Missouri. Um, so again, first and foremost, thank you so much for joining. And we're going to start with um, our first presenter, Beloit. So you're welcome to share your um, Beloit College. You're welcome to share your screen. Okay, great. Thank you very much for spending time with us. One more Zoom, right, in your life. Oh, not fun. My name is Karin Smith. I am the Midwest Regional Admission Manager at Beloit College in Beloit, Wisconsin. We are a private liberal arts college. We are 175 years old, and an interesting fact is um, the state of Wisconsin was chartered after Beloit College was founded, um, as was the city of Beloit. So everybody grew up around us. We are conveniently located just 90 minutes north of Chicago, 50 minutes south of Madison, Wisconsin, where the University of Wisconsin-Madison is. Shout out to Sarah Blank. And uh, we are just 60 minutes west of Milwaukee, Wisconsin, the largest city in the state, all accessible via public transportation. Okay, so let's 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 talk about COVID. Can we? Um, it feels a little better talking about it right now because things are looking good. So responding to the pandemic last spring was a challenge none of us could anticipate. However, at Beloit, we quickly determined that not only were we going to not be stymied by this, but that COVID would act as a catalyst for us to create an even better experience for our students launch the Beloit Action Plan, which is mentioned here, a suite of academic, personal, and financial support programs quickly launched for our community. Um, we'll talk a little bit more about that in a minute. Um, and we didn't only create a better experience for our students, we did it with them. And it was a strong group of students that convinced us that the best way to succeed at being on campus in person, which our students have been all year safely in person, mind you, was to allow our students to be the experts on how to make this work. Um, the result was a realistic and safe set of behavioral guidelines developed by students for students and delivered from students to students and to the entire Beloit community. And it has worked. The vast majority of our students, as I mentioned, have studied safely and successfully in person throughout the entire academic year. You can see what that, those expectations were for this year and going forward um, on our website uh, in the Beloit Student Statement of Culture. Okay, we are a place that's built on and supported by collaborative relationships. We're small. Right? So we should be like that. We have 1,275 total students, all undergraduates. So we offer no graduate level programs. We specialize on that first four years that students are out of school. We are per capita, the most diverse college in the state of Wisconsin. And you'll see some numbers here on the screen that I'll tell you a little bit more about that. We have small classes, personal attention and very creative areas of study. So you'll see that some of our most popular majors are listed here, but we have many more than that. And almost 40% of our students do a double major. So that's awesome. The single most popular major coming in the door, multi-interested, right? So we don't say undecided. We don't like the way that sounds. We say multi-interested and most of our students are. You don't need to know what it is that you wanna do before you even come to the Lloyd College. The building that you see here is called the powerhouse. And most of our students come to Blake, as I mentioned, as multi-interested and take full advantage of academic and extracurricular opportunities. 
um, transcends more than just one major. 95% of our students live on campus all four years. Um, when we are talking with students about coming to Beloit, we talk about not just the academic opportunities, but also the extracurricular opportunities. The building you see here is one year old. It's 120,000 square feet of a student center and athletic facility that used to be a coal energy power plant. It sits right on the Rock River, adjacent to our campus and adjacent to downtown. And it has become very quickly a hub of activity for our students. Um, we are five minutes from downtown Beloit and actually have three buildings that are in downtown. So there's a great relationship that exists between our students and the city of Beloit. Um, we have 18 varsity athletic teams, division three, and about 40% of the students at Beloit are varsity athletes. Two of the pieces of our Beloit Action Plan are mentioned here, our advanced mentoring program, as well as career channels. Um, as I mentioned before, we are a community built on relationships. And through the advanced mentoring program, students are matched with their first faculty mentor within three days of telling us that they're coming to Beloit. So students who are seniors right now telling us that they're coming to Beloit next fall are gonna be in touch with their first faculty mentor while they're still in high school. Um, advisors work with students on transitioning from high school to Beloit. A student's advisory group becomes their first circle of peers that they start to get to know even before arriving on campus. And the AMP program guides students through making the best of their college experience and planning for the future over the course of their first two years. Students can then transition into a career channel. Actually, they can get involved in that as our students get involved in career channels as early as their freshman year. Admission specs are listed here. We practice comprehensive admission review. We are proudly and historically test optional. Um, the biggest thing to know is that most students being admitted to Beloit are pretty solid B students. And there's Sarah. Thank you very much, Beloit College. Next up, we have Temple University, Japan campus. Okay, thank you very much. Let me go back to the beginning of my presentation here. Uh, my name is Andrew. Um, I'm from Temple University Japan campus. Uh, we're offering something quite uh, different here, a, a very uh, different location, as we are based out in Tokyo. Uh, so I do want to start with a quick overview of why students should consider uh, Japan as a possible study destination. Uh, as I mentioned, it's a unique opportunity to uh, really immerse yourself in a very unique culture in Japan. Um, it's thousands of years old. Um, whether you're an anime or manga fan, uh, you like the cuisine like myself, like the sushi, the ramen, the history of Japan, the architecture, the, the, the futuristic aspect of the country, there really is something for everyone here. Um, it's annually recognized as a very safe place to live. And one of my favorite things is uh, in Japan, if you lose your wallet or your phone on the train, and this has happened to me um, more than once, uh, 99 times out of 100, you're likely to get that back at the end of the day. So there are huge benefits to living here. Um, great number of work opportunities now within Japan with an active push uh, uh, from Japan itself to recruit from overseas. And so great number of job opportunities for students, um, a really good uh, health system here and a world recognized education system. And with Temple University Japan campus, um, you have that um, benefit of knowing that you're remaining in the American university education system, you're earning that American degree, uh, you just get to do that while studying in Tokyo, Japan. Uh, so for those of you who don't know, uh, Temple originates out of Philadelphia. It's a huge public research university on the East Coast of the United States. And TUJ is simply an international branch campus, an extension of that school uh, out in Tokyo, Japan. So as I mentioned, you're working towards an American degree. You're studying 100% in English, so you're not required to know Japanese before you enroll, but you can certainly start to learn or continue to learn when you arrive here at the university. And if you've taken AP classes, taken any college classes as well, you know, you can be safe in mind that those will potentially transfer over uh, to the start of your uh, undergraduate degree here at Temple. Uh, in addition to our main campus in Philadelphia, our campus in, uh, in Japan, we also have a campus in Rome, Italy. 
Uh, the majority of our students are coming to the Japan campus to do their full four year undergraduate degree with us here in Tokyo. Uh, but it is uh, more than possible to split your time up between the different campuses. So we have had students spend uh, time on all three campuses to complete their degree because you're earning temple credits no matter what campus you are studying on. And we have a number of uh, um, university partners that you can study uh, overseas as well with uh, in a, a variety of different locations throughout the world. In terms of our Tokyo location, uh, we are very lucky to be located in the heart of Tokyo. Uh, if anyone here is familiar with the city, places like Shibuya, uh, Shinjuku, which are real central hubs for Tokyo, great shopping, great restaurants, it's where the cool kids like to hang out. Uh, we're located within 15 minutes of those uh, uh, by the local public transport network. So we have a really great vantage point to go and explore this amazing city. And we're very lucky in Tokyo, we've probably got the world's safest, most reliable public transport system in the whole world. So again, it makes Tokyo very, very accessible for all of our students. In terms of your experience here at the university, uh, in addition to your regular uh, lecture style um, classes, um, we're very big on case study work. Um, so whether you're um, uh, linking up with a company in Silicon Valley in the US via Zoom, working on a marketing project, or going into the boardroom, for example, of Hagen Dazs Japan, you'll get lots of practical experience to really put your academic work into context. Uh, we have a very extensive internship pr program where all students have the opportunity to apply for an internship. For some of our majors, it's a core component. It's, it's a required component of what you need to do to complete the major that you're studying on. And then outside of the classroom as well, we have uh, a very extensive activities program we're giving students opportunities to uh, not only explore Tokyo uh, but visit all parts of Japan so whether you're going skiing in Hokkaido or going down to the uh, the southern part of Japan to uh, visit the hot springs there really is a you know a great variety of activities that you can take part in. We're a very diverse campus we currently have around 65 different nationalities uh, represented on campus uh, that same diversity is reflected in our in our faculty with faculty from all over the world coming to study here in, with us in Japan including a number of faculty from the main campus who will come and spend a, an academic year with us teaching here uh, at the Japan campus uh, we are much smaller than our, our main campus in the US we currently have around 1300 students uh, so it is a very small uh, college campus um, very strong, you know, uh, close uh, environment. You'll get to know your students very well. You'll get to know the faculty very well. Uh, it's a huge benefit when you to talk to your stu TJ students about the relationships they can develop uh, with the faculty here in terms of getting advice on their, you know, their assignments or, or advice for after, after graduating as well. They're a great resource for our students. And as mentioned, we have the activities program, a number of clubs to help you, you know, uh, meet, meet fellow students as well. We focus on 10 undergraduate majors, uh, mainly in the liberal arts field. Um, um, it is possible to double major, major and minor, for example, a very popular combination being something like an international business major with a minor in Japanese. Uh, we moved to a brand new campus in 2019. Uh, this is a huge milestone for us. We've actually been in Japan for um, nearly 40 years now, but our new campus gives us a great new purpose-built facility for our students. One of the biggest benefits of being a smaller branch campus is our tuition fees. Uh, they come in at approximately 15,000 US dollars per year. Uh, you can apply with us directly on our Common App, uh, on our online application. You can find us on Common App as well. Uh, we are test optional. Um, we have a number of webinars going on right now, so we encourage you to check those out, meet with students, talk about admissions. Uh, you'll find all those things on our website. Uh, and thank you very much for listening. Thank you very much, Temple University. Next up, we have Valparaiso University. Hello everyone and welcome. I am so excited to be presenting today on behalf of Valparaiso University. My name is Kara Short and I'm an admission counselor here. So uh, let's go ahead and get started. Um, let's see. So Valparaiso was actually founded in 1859. Um, so we're about 150 years old, sitting on 320 acres of a beautiful campus. Um, and we are a small, independent, private uh, Lutheran institution. So um, we have about uh, 3,200 undergraduate students here with an average class size of about 20 students. So plenty of um, opportunities to have a one-on-one -on -one relationship with your faculty members. Here we have five academic colleges. 
We have our Christ College, which is our honors college. We have a College of Business, College of Arts and Sciences, College of Nursing and Health Professions, and College of Engineering. Our top majors are nursing, physician assistant, business, and engineering. So we have uh, lots of great programs, but we do have over 70 plus majors here on campus. One of the things that I always like to tell students is that our faculty here are really amazing. They just love interacting with students, getting to know them. Here, you definitely will not be a fly on the wall. Um, student, er, students will get to know their faculty members. And uh, you know, if you're missing in class, uh, a professor will definitely reach out to you to see if you're doing okay. So we have lots of opportunities to get involved on campus. Um, first being we have over 100 clubs and organizations here. So that's super awesome because you can get as involved as you want to be. Uh, my favorite club on campus is either the Chemistry Club, the Criminology Club, or this club called Haunt, which actually um, is a group of students who get together and watch horror movies. So I think that that's so cool. Um, our Criminology Club is super awesome as well. They actually partner with a local penitentiary and they do classes there um, and uh, just learn all types of neat stuff about crime. So those are a couple of my favorites. Next up, we have a lot of service and faith opportunities on campus. As a private Lutheran institution, we do hold strong beliefs with our Lutheran heritage, but um, you know, we, we accept all walks of life here, um, whatever your religion may be, or if you don't have one, that is totally fine with us. We accept you here. We are very proud of our Gandhi King Center here on campus which holds our Office of Multicultural Programming and our Study Abroad Office as well. So they do lots of different programming on campus for different cultures, um, with one of them being the Taste of Valpo, which is a huge banquet event that happens in the spring where students get together, all different clubs and organizations, and they make different cuisines from around the world. So that's a really cool event to go to. And then finally, we have our fine arts opportunities. We have an amazing uh, music program here, which is really awesome. Um, there's also scholarships available to music, um, music players. Um, you do not have to be you know, a music major to participate. You could um, just play clarinet or something like that and receive a scholarship. So that's super nice as well. We are a D1 school here, so that's really awesome as well. We um, pride ourselves on you know, our teams here. Um, you can see those listed on the screen here, but you can get as involved with that as you would like. Tickets are free to students, so you can go to as many games as you want. Um, but if you're not you know, looking to compete on a division one level, we also have intramural and club sports on campus. So a little about the application process here at Valpo. We do have our free application and we are on the Common App. Um, either one is totally fine. We don't really have a preference. We went test optional this year, which is going very well for us. So we will be continuing that. Um, so as we are going test optional, we will be leaning a little bit more heavy on GPA, um, supplemental documents such as letters of recommendation and a personal statement or an essay. Um, so it's definitely important to submit those as well. And then lastly, we have our scholarship priority deadline of November 1st. While we are a rolling admission school, we highly encourage students to apply before November 1st to maximize their scholarship opportunities. And then as you know, um, that FAFSA is opening on October 1st and you should get that in at least by April 15th, but um, definitely try to get that done as soon as possible because the sooner you get it done, the faster you get your Valpo financial aid package. So thank you so much and have a great day. Wonderful, thank you so much. Next up, we have St. John's College.
Thank you so much. Hi, everyone. I'm Caroline Randall, Director of Admissions for St. John's College. And St. John's is pretty unique. We have one major. We have no lecture classes. We have no textbooks. We have no tests. So at St. John's, you get the third oldest college in the nation. And we have two locations. We are in Annapolis, Maryland, which is our original campus location. Brick and Ivy, right downtown Annapolis, close to DC, Boston, New York City. We're on the water. So we do rowing and crew. We play croquet matches with the Naval Academy across the street. We have about 450 students on our campus in Annapolis. So it's a small campus. Our second location is in Santa Fe, New Mexico. We are at 7,300 feet elevation. We are at the start of the Rocky Mountains. We have 400 miles of hiking trails that lead from our campus parking lot. It's a lot of skiing, hiking, mountain biking, a lot of amazing outdoor activities. And we have about 350 students on our campus in Santa Fe. So again, small. We are a private liberal arts college and we are a great books college. We are considered the most contrarian college in the United States, thanks to the New York Times. But all of our students follow the same degree plan. And so you do a liberal arts program that's heavily focused in STEM as well. So you're going to take four years of mathematics, three years of science, history, humanities, political science, music theory, philosophy, literature, you take it all. Every single one of our classes is done discussion-based Socratic method, which means you sit with less than 20 students in every single class and you have a discussion. You actually sit around a seminar table and your teacher sits at the table with you. We actually call our professors tutors because they don't stand at the front of the class and profess anything. They actually sit and participate in the discussion. So every single voice around the table is able to speak up, to share their opinions, and to ask questions. So with all of these classes, you're not going to have textbooks. You are going to read original literature directly from the authors of these subjects. You are going to study ancient Greek, Greek democracy in the Greek language, and you are going to look at the foundations of democracy. You are going to read all of the founding paperwork of the United States, and you are going to talk about how democracy changed from ancient Greece to the foundations of the United States. You are going to look at political theory. You're going to look at calculus in Latin. You are going to read directly from Jane Austen, Du Bois, James Baldwin, Tocqueville, Plato, and so many others. So you read from these original authors. And all of this is done in discussion based. Now, why do we do this? Because it teaches you on every different possible subject. You're not just gonna have one career in your lifetime. You're gonna have four, five, six, many, and you need to be well-versed in so many different areas so that you can be flexible in whatever career you wanna go into. About 20% of our students go on to law school. We have a 100% acceptance rate into law school. About 20% go into STEM or medical. About 20% go into education and teach. But beyond that, our alumni are going everywhere. They are artists. We have some of the most pro prolific winemakers in the United States, the founding, um, the founders of Atlantic Records and Motown, the current editor of Huffington Post. We have senators. We have so many different careers that come out of St. John's. So you can do just about anything with this very unique career. About 85% of our students go into graduate school with a top program for PhDs in philosophy. So you just have so many different options with this liberal arts curriculum, and you don't have to pick a major. So if you're the student that's not sure where they wanna go with their career and you love to read, you need to be at St. John's College. A Little bit about student life. We do a lot of great fun activities on both campuses. We do not have varsity athletics, but we do compete internally with all of our different programs. And actually at our Annapolis campus, 95% of our students play intramurals and you play every single sport that we offer. Just like in the classroom where you may be an expert in some areas but need help in the others, we find the exact same, th exact same thing happens on the court or on the field. So we really get to be active outside of the classroom. We are on the Common App, we have our own application or we're on the Coalition App. No application fee. We have been test optional for more than 40 years. Your essay and your letters of recommendations and your interview matter so much more than your grades and your test scores. We have very generous financial aid, same cost for in-state and out-of-state. 
We dropped our tuition $17,000 three years ago, and we haven't touched it since. We have generous merit scholarships, other financial aid, and we also are matching all Pell Grants. So if you're Pell eligible, you're guaranteed to double that when you're at St. John's, plus many other different opportunities for scholarships and financial aid. We have virtual tours, we have in-person tours, we have so many different events that you can join, including book clubs and other activities. So check out our website for more details. And most importantly, check out our reading list. It's the 200 plus books that you're gonna read in your four years at St. John's. And if you read through that and see books that you like, you know you've picked the right college. All right, thank you so much. Next up, we have Marquette University. Yes, hi folks. Good evening, good afternoon, good morning, wherever you're listening from. Uh, my name is Grant Egan. I'm the admission counselor for Marquette University for the greater St. Louis area and also pockets of Illinois. And I'm a Marquette grad myself, so slightly biased in everything I'm gonna say tonight. Uh, folks, we've got some great info coming your way. Let me see, it looks like I'm sharing my screen, which is great. So the first thing I wanna chat about, no surprise, academics, okay? so. Uh, a couple of things I want to mention, you're going to hear a lot of common themes with what has been shared before during this info session tonight, and particularly with test optional, particularly with a very strong liberal arts, humanities focused curriculum. Um, all of those will be applying to Marquette as well. So, you know, we're, we're not expecting 16, 17 year olds to know exactly what they want to do with their time. And if you do, bravo to you. Let me know how I can be more like you because I went to Marquette with a very much of an open mind. Uh, and I really do believe in that power of seeing where your interests are when you start, exploring them as you are a student, seeing courses in your field of study, seeing courses in fields of study you didn't know you could go into, and ultimately deciding typically around your sophomore or junior year what it is you're going to ultimately graduate from. Now, we've got roughly 80 different majors, and I'd like to use the rest of my time today to discuss all 80 of them. So we've got accounting, we've got advertising, but no, I'm kidding. We're not doing that. We are not doing that, folks. So just know that when you're applying, the only important deadline that has been around with market admissions is December 1st. We're on Common App. We have our own application. It doesn't matter what you apply to. Again, another common theme there. Um, and multiple opportunities for students to pursue five-year master's degrees, six-year doctorate degrees, or even seven-year doctorate degrees as well. So loads more information on our website, but I would be remiss if I didn't spend some time talking about our Jesuit identity. It's very important to us. We are a Catholic school. Most of our students identify as Catholic. Uh, when I say that, one of the questions I get most often is, well, do you have to be Catholic to attend? Absolutely not. No, you, you are talking to a uh, born and raised Catholic, but no longer practicing Catholic, and I have found my people at Marquette. So it is very much something for students to do if they're looking to do it, but it is not a requirement in any way, shape, or form. The one thing I will mention, though, is because of that Jesuit identity, a lot of our students do partake in some kind of service, some kind of volunteer outreach program. In fact, it's the second most common thing that our students do. A little bit more about our neck of the woods, where we are. We're located just outside of Milwaukee, Wisconsin. We are not a downtown Milwaukee campus. And if you see right behind me, we've got a little bit of a slice of campus here. That's a little bit more traditional with the big quads, green spaces, trees, even the size of building, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so a little bit about the campus numbers. We're a medium-sized school, 8,000 undergrads, about 3,000 graduate students. And a little bit more about the, the city of Milwaukee itself. And I will acknowledge, I probably have about a minute left to chat. I could give full length, three hour info sessions about the city, but you're gonna have an extraordinarily large amount of opportunities to take what you've learned in the classroom and apply it to the real world that is well, right downtown, just a couple blocks away from our campus is where the city starts. So loads of opportunities exist from outside of campus. And that's exactly what we want you to do is to get involved. I really do think the secret to success of any college experience is to find your people, find your people. Whether it means starting your own club, joining something that's already been around for hundreds of years, being more part of the Milwaukee experience, market experience, you're going to be so much more successful. The more you are involved outside the classroom, the better you're going to be performing inside the classroom too. Now, of course, there's only so much we can talk about in six minutes from a virtual college fair. So do stay in touch with us. We're on all forms of social media. 
emails. Uh, we just took our fax number off our contact info. So we are really adapting to the modern age. I will say that. So stay in touch, folks. Happy to continue the conversation as needed. And I'll pass it back over to Sarah. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Marquette and Grant. Next up and final, we have Knox College. Excellent. Thank you so much. You never know when you're going to need to receive a fax. So that's a bummer. <laughs> Hi, everybody. My name is Sarah Colangelo, um, and I am from Knox College in Galesburg, Illinois. I'm really excited. What a cool group of colleges this is. I'm very uh, happy to be among them. Um, I'm going to provide a whirlwind tour of the human powered Knox experience. If you get mail from Knox, you know that human powered is printed on every single piece of mail that you receive. Um, and the whole sort of sense of human powered, what we mean by that is that every person on campus changes the way campus feels and functions, right? At Knox, you are going to learn just as much from the folks around you as you are from your time in the classroom, right? From your professors and the folks um, there. Um, so. If you've ever been on an athletic team or in an ensemble or in a really good class, you kind of know what that feels like when somebody's missing, right? Um, and then, so that's how I like to think about human power because every, um, every member of your team changes the way your team plays. Um, so I will move along and we'll just talk about the stuff everybody wants to know. <laughs> so Knox is a college of about 1200 students. So classes are usually between 10 and 20, very conversation-based. Um, students come from 45 states and 49 countries. We're about 19% international. Um, about 32% of Knox students from the US self-identify as BIPOC students. Um, there are 18 NCAA Division III athletic teams and over 100 organizations, student-run organizations. All of this to say, um, Knox students kind of come from all over the place um, and you hang out with them in a lot of different ways, right? People are keeping busy in a lot of different ways. So you're kind of constantly mixing with folks who are different from you, who are involved in different things, who are interested in different things, um, and who have very different backgrounds. And again, you learn a lot from that. Um, Knox is one of the 40 colleges that change lives. There are a few of us on here. Um, if you're doing it right, there isn't a college that won't change your life. Um, but this is a really great place to start um, if you've kind of liked what you've heard from a lot of the schools today. Um, just a few stats in terms of admission. Um, Knox is also very holistic in our application review process. You will hear that term kind of a lot. That means I read every single page of your application from your recommendations to um, every word of your essay, um, just a little bit of everything. Knox is also test optional. We have been for quite some time. How does it feel to be on campus? Um, feel welcome to come visit us <laughs> if you'd like to get a sense of it. Um, talk to current students, that's the best thing I can tell you to do. Um, Knox feels busy, but not chaotic. There's always something going on, but there's also always time to spend time uh, chatting with others, right? In the cafeteria, in a club. Um, again, learning from the people around you. Um, productive, but not exclusively goal-oriented. It's very easy and very common to take, um, take a class outside of your major, right? Take five. <laughs> Um, so go forward. It's also okay to make mistakes at a place like Knox, no matter where you go to college, go somewhere where you feel comfortable making mistakes. Um, collaborative, but not competitive. Uh, Knox students are just interested in each other. They don't compete. Um, it's hard to be competitive at Knox. I'll talk more about that in a second. My favorite, philosophical, but not pretentious. Knox students like to have deep conversations, but never just to hear themselves talk. Uh, friendly, but not shallow. Folks want to know how you're doing when they ask you uh, how you are. Unapologetically smart. Knox students, uh, faculty, staff tend to be pretty altruistic, pretty giving, um, and learning things is an avenue toward that. Um, and very human. People do cool stuff here, and they're pretty chill about it. Uh, we're in Galesburg, Illinois, a city of about 33,000 people, uh, about three hours from St. Louis, about five hours from Kansas City on the Amtrak line, which I'll talk about in a second. Um, Knox and the city of Galesburg were founded by a group of abolitionists in 1837. You can really see the history in town here. Um, we have really good food in town. You got to stop me because we have really great Korean food, really good organic, um, like vegan Indian food. Um, if that's your thing, we also have Buffalo Wild Wings um, and Target and all those sorts of comforts of home. Um, 
a place connected to other places. I said we're on Amtrak. So um, the Amtrak line runs directly to Kansas City. It's about a five hour train trip. We're also um, on the line to Chicago, uh, about two and a half hours. I never say that we're in the city, but it's not unreasonable to get there. Um, we're also about 40 minutes away from Peoria, Illinois, and 40 minutes away from the Quad Cities in Iowa, which is where you would go if you needed like an IMAX uh, movie theater, right? Um, and Galesburg is an opportunity. I, I could talk all day about like going to school in a small city and how cool that is, right? We're across the street from the, the courthouse in town. There are two hospitals. Um, students are interning and shadowing at these places, but they're also going to local businesses in town and creating internships, right? Building internships from the ground up. Um, and that is one cool thing about going to school uh, in a small city like Galesburg. Three other things you might not find anywhere else. Um, we'll talk first about the Power of Experience grant. In your junior year at Knox, junior or senior year, you can choose um, to do something outside the classroom. You're probably gonna do something outside the classroom before this, after this, but every student at Knox gets $2,000 to do something outside the classroom. Could be research and internship study abroad. That money is waiting for you. Um, Knox is on a 3-3 academic calendar. So three classes at a time, three terms per year, nine classes a year, uh, 36 classes total. Total, um, and it takes between 10 and 14 to complete your major. These are some majors and minors. So as you can see, you've got a lot of time to, to do different stuff, to try new things. Um, and then immersion terms, a little unique to Knox as well. You don't have to do one of these, but you can. Um, these are terms wherein you're just doing one thing instead of taking uh, that traditional three classes. You're kind of having a hands-on experience. Green Oaks term is my favorite. Um, just a little bit about finances. Let's talk about this one-on-one. -on -one. Start talking with your family about finances right now, please. Um, and then after Knox, just a collection of statistics that you can see. Um, and I am out of time. Conveniently, I am done. Um, so I will say thank you very much um, and have a great one. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much. And we have a little bit of time. So we're going to move into some questions. Um, and if all of our uh, presenters could hop back on video, thank you so much. The first question um, we're going to, to talk about is what advice would you give someone going through the college search process? Love this question. So we'll start with Karin from Beloit. I have two pieces of advice, but they're kind of the same. One is you need to spend some time with yourself, thinking about what's important to you, what kind of learner you are, what kind of environment you wanna find yourself in that will best support the way you learn and grow. And what this means is you have to be selfish. And we in this culture have a pretty difficult time just saying, no, 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 you see, this is all about me and what I want and what I need. And so I'm gonna be very selfish about this process. And so get over feeling uncomfortable about that because it will help you in the long run. And on to Temple University. Um, I think being, you know, a campus located overseas, I would, I would just say to students that they should consider, you know, the overseas experience, expanding their, their college search to look at these campuses that are located in these amazing countries. There can be huge benefits to studying in another country. Uh, it can be, simply the finances they can be often cheaper than studying uh, even in-state tuition in the us and plus there's those benefits of you know immersing yourself in another culture uh, learning another language uh, so i just say consider you you know expanding on your your co college search as well Valparaiso university i would recommend having fun with it you know um a lot of students just get so caught up in the search process that they don't have fun with it. And I just feel like, you know, it, go on a road trip with your family to a college and, and check them out, you know, try different ice creams in the different towns you go to. Um, just really own your experience and have fun with it. St. John's College. Um, I would say don't rule out any college based on cost alone right now. Colleges cannot offer you financial aid until you've been accepted. Um, there are private schools that don't have in-state or out-of-state. There are public and private schools that want you so bad, they are gonna give you so much financial aid that they can look like your best deal even if their initial price tag looks really large. Um, apply for every single scholarship you can ever possibly find. Uh, there are scholarships for just about anything that makes you weird. Uh, the Texas Too Tall Society has scholarships for tall people, the duct tape scholarship where you make your prom dress and tux out of duct tape. Whatever it is, find these types of scholarships and they can make any college affordable. 
And don't stress if you can't go and visit colleges because that can be an expensive process. I can't afford to fly to Japan right now, but I would absolutely love to go check out Temple. Um, but this is what we've learned from the pandemic is that we can do virtual conversations and we can do virtual tours. So you really get to explore the entire world from your computer. And we're going to jump to Knox College. Excellent. All right, so two things. Um, talk, talk with your family right now about, um, about, about finances. I think that that's a, something that I would just recommend doing, just get the initial awkwardness over with, right? <laughs> Eat the frog, go through that process. Um, and then I kind of want to jump off what Karen said about spend time with yourself, learn about who you are, because you are going to learn things about yourself through this process and you have to let yourself learn those things. So talk to people around you about what their perception of you is. Talk to your friends, Have start having deep conversations now. If that means you're journaling, that's great. If that means you are just spending time with the people who you really feel like get you um, and kind of examining why you feel that way, um, do that. Because again, you are going to learn a lot about yourself. Um, and I'm really excited for that for you. So the next question I think we love talking about, what is your favorite event or tradition on campus? And we'll start again with Beloit. We have something called Spring Day. And what the president does is on a glorious, glorious day, just as the weather is starting to be fun to be outside versus not fun, um, he wakes up and makes sure that the bells in our chapel ring for 10 straight minutes eight o'clock and again at nine o'clock and again at 10 o'clock to signal the fact that all classes are canceled. Everyone should be outside enjoying the day or sleeping in and events quickly get planned and it's fabulous. And there's a great, um, oh, you know, there's a game seeing who can guess when spring day is gonna be, but it's a big secret and uh, it's awesome. Thank you, Temple University in Japan. Um, one of my uh, more favorite recent events that we held was the Community Day um, on campus, where we, we had a huge Japanese matsuri or festival uh, with stalls manned by uh, Temple University of Japan campus students uh, selling food, doing uh, 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 festival games, etc., and inviting the local, local community to come on campus and, and mingle with our students, with our staff. Uh, it was a really fun day. Thank you. Valparaiso. So I feel like I have to talk about this one because of my background, my picture actually. So um, we have a bridge on campus that is located behind the admissions building. And under the bridge is um, train tracks. And so the old tale was if a couple was kissing on the bridge and a train ran under the train on the train tracks, then the couple would have good luck on their exams. So, hey, who doesn't want good luck on exams? So. That's awesome. <laughs> and St. John's College. Um, so I mentioned this briefly earlier, but for the past 41 years, we have played a croquet match against the Naval Academy every single spring. Um, and a huge population comes out and watches us. You dress up in different period costumes or big hats or whatever else. You get your blanket and your picnic and you sit and watch the croquet match. Um, and the students and the cadets from the Naval Academy get to pick their own uniforms for the year. And they're always very humorous and very interesting. Um, but what I love is that St. John's College has beat the Naval Academy all but four times in the past 40 something years. And it is really cool to say that you get to beat the Naval Academy in anything sports related if you would like to consider croquet a sport. Lovely, and finally Knox College. Excellent. Uh, my favorite campus event at Knox is called Pump Handle. Um, so like when you're priming a water pump, like if you've ever been camping. So Pump Handle happens the day before classes start each year and every single person on the entire campus. So the mascot, the president of the college, all of the students, faculty, staff, um, children, sometimes dogs, um, you get out in a big long line 
and that line turns in on itself. Um, and theoretically, you shake hands with every single person on campus. We didn't do it this year. We did it virtually. <laughs> um, but so you meet everyone, right? You meet everyone, you smile at everyone, and it really does break down that sort of like, again, that level of discomfort that you might have with folks when you first meet them. Like you're all on the same team, you're all in it together. Um, and then right before you graduate as a senior, before graduation day, you do it one more time with your faculty, staff, professors, things like that, and you will cry. <laughs> so that's my favorite event. Wonderful. Well, thank you so much, everyone, for joining us this evening. We, um, we thank you for tuning in to this session, and we encourage you um, to take the quick survey um, with um, which you'll see, I'm going to put it on your screen right now. So right after you close this window um, and review the recording, if that's how you're tuning in, um, there will be a four question survey that will appear. Um, and we encourage you to sign up for more sessions. And thank you so much to our wonderful presenters for all your um, wealth of knowledge and information. We wish everyone the best of luck this rest of the semester. Thank you and have a wonderful evening morning, wherever you're tuning in from. Thank you.